Hi, this is Shui with a review of the much-anticipated Jordan 35. They're already out, yes, uh, by Jason Tatum, or some of the faces of the uh, Jordan main signature flagship models are still wearing 34s. I wonder why. Well, first of all, it looked like, you know, it looked like poop at first. Everyone was complaining about how lazy the design looked. Is this a Jumpman, Rising Sun, or whatever it is? And then when they heard it's actually the main flagship Jordan uh, number Jordan Jordan 35 people were kind of shocked about how cheap or kitty the design looked well if you look at it uh, maybe it's this colorway I like the colorway it's uh, <laughs> it's pretty radical uh, I guess you could squeeze it into any NBA uniforms and say this is our team color uh, <laughs> Knicks maybe uh, the blue magic uh, this orange suns grayish spurs who knows um, this is definitely paying tribute to the Jordan 5s, just like how the 31, 32, 34, 33 have done in the past. So you can see a lot of the silhouette, like the ankle and this little puffy little, um, puffy little piece, and the way this uh, ankle collar is shaped, as well as, of course, the tongue. Yes, it's very Jordan 5-esque. Um, Well, I, I, I like, I dig the iridescent, this rainbow hologram thing. I'm, this is my kryptonite. I can't say no to this. This is always a big appeal factor for me. So it's good that they use this in both parts. Uh, too bad they didn't use the 3M scotch material they used to use for the Jordan 5 tongue. Uh, but it's not too bad. They <laughs> they did a little cute thing where it says Nike Air and I got a Jordan Jumpman logo at the back. And they covered this with a little foam material just to give it uh, a bit more preservation and uh, make sure it's kept in pristine condition and this little 23 uh, numbering uh, it seems like lazily hand-drawn it has a silhouette of a of a basketball shoe there it's it's kind of a throwback to the Jordan 5s where uh, Michael Jordan started to have uh, the 23 stitched in the shoes uh, before they, they just had the Jumpman logo or the Air Cloud logo so nice little uh, heads up call back to that a throwback to that well Ultimately, it can't help avoid the comparison to its predecessor, the Jordan 34s. First of all, uh, uh, let's talk about the weight. For size 9, nine it weighs about 416 grams. If you look at the Jordan 34s, it weighs around uh, 390 grams for a size 9.5. So that should be about 380 grams uh, versus 416. So a little bit heavier, but anything that's under 500 grams is okay for me, especially if it feels light on your foot. Um, it's not too bad. They, couldn't, they could have done better. The, the main selling point or the main marketing point of the 34 is that it's the lightest Air Jordan ever. And then this suddenly went another way and made it a little bit heavier. But it's justified the fact that it's heavier because first of all, if you look at the cushioning, oh my God, the Air Zoom is exposed on the heel and it is huge. I love it. It's huge Air Sole unit at the heel finally. Uh, they've been going cheap on it since the 30, uh, 30, 33s, 34s. They've had, like, for 34s, it was just foam, padding, and a little bit of a tiny rectangular zoom air unit on top. So you could feel sort of like the zoom, but it wasn't as impactful in terms of the compression or the shock absorption or the, the cushioning effect of it. So this is a good upgrade. Uh, it's... It feels just as low to the ground as the 34s with a lot more plush cushioning and impact protection. You don't feel it sinking all the way. It's got a good rebound bounce. It's, it's firm yet cushy and it cradles you as you take the first step. Speaking of the first step, the biggest problem I had with the Jordan 34s is that the clips played, it's a nice little innovation. As you can tell, that it's going to provide a little bit more of a bounce or a recoil. Uh, and of course, it, it hollows out uh, the, the core so it provides with some uh, weight reduction there help with some weight reduction there but because well th well th while this is supposed to provide some recoil or additional bounce or spring to your step as you compress from the heel to the forefoot but there is there is a compression stolen or deducted uh, by this plate because it's rigid and it's not allowing compression on the heel once you take the first step and as i mentioned before this is all foam, just a little bit of a coin size zoom air on top. So the heel cushioning was a bit of a problem for me. It's okay if you land perfectly at the core, but how many times you do that when you're playing ball, you kind of tend to press to uh, the 
the lateral side or the uh, uh, the, the medial side or the lateral side. And once you're compressing on that, there's very little compression and it's just the out, outsole and the plates. So you might slip. You might feel this, this thud where you feel that impact going through your bones. So it's not good. So they made a drastic improvement where the plate is pushed up to the front and there's a lot of room for compression at the heel. Coupled with a bigger zoom here. But even if it's a bigger zoom here, it doesn't feel high off the ground. So it's good. It feels as low to the ground as the 34s with improved cushioning. So that's good. On the forefoot, you can see the zoom here as well. It's exposed there. Uh, that's another puzzling thing about the, the plate is the plate used to used to be separated here on the forefoot so you could see the zoom here and then at the heel it used to gather into one piece so it's got a little bit more, more of a recoil but now that's not anymore the the eclipse plate has become sort of like the Drummond diamond anti-inversion support which acts as a midfoot shank at the same time so yeah it kind of uh, went back on uh, the innovation they was pushing for i would have prefer to uh, maybe have a little bit of a connection here to provide that similar recoil as the Jumpman uh, as the Jordan 34s but hey it's not too bad it provides that anti uh, inversion support and there there's a lot more hole there's a lot more elevation and uh, decoupling here so the weight is reduced imagine if the hole isn't there this would have weighed a whole lot more than it already does um oh, the zoom bag is huge at the heel it is pretty amazing. Wow. <laughs> uh, so yeah, four foot zoom is, it seems like it's the same size as the ones they used in the 34, uh, but there's a little bit of a difference in terms of how it feels. Uh, 34, it feels very low to the ground and you can feel the zoom working like a zoom turbo that you feel in the Kyrie's. But this, it feels more like the traditional Nike four foot cushioning where you feel soft compression, but it's a little bit mushy and it it gets compressed wherever the pinpoint area that's being compressed so it's so for 34s you feel like if you're pressing on this side of your foot you feel the whole cushioning working with you sinking and bouncing back this it feels like this pivot this pinpoint area it's sunken and it slowly comes back up or it's it sinks more uh, uh, more responsibly which is not always a good thing you might want to feel that that bounce immediate bounce that you feel with a thinner zoom air that's just underneath your foot so I guess it's it's a matter of the foam that's being used and the way the zoom air is positioned uh, so if you like that cradling feeling then you like the 35s if you like that 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 bouncy recoil feeling then you will like the 34s but you feel like if you feel like you're getting uh, some you feel if you feel like you're about to or you do get blisters because of the lack of forefoot cushioning in the 34s this is definitely going to prevent you from getting that side effect uh, another issue I have with the cushioning which I feel like they could have improved upon is the 34s um, it felt a little bit hard around the toe area and you could actually feel the stitching parts sticking out so that's not good and the the, the insole was not such a bad ortholite insole, but uh, it didn't work enough. I had to get a thicker insole to make sure the cushioning is working better, and I don't feel that that impact, that hardness on the toe area. So it's similar here, but you don't feel that stitching rigid rigidity. It's it's a lot softer because the insole that's used is very similar to the thick ortholite insole that's been used in the Kobe Tens. Overall, the cushioning feels a lot like the Kobe Tens, except. Uh, much improved forefoot, improved forefoot cushioning. Uh, the Kobe 10s had super large zoom here on the heel and it worked fine. Um, the insole, uh, it's, it feels soft and carpety, but it feels like there's a bit of a firmer layer on top. Uh, while on the 35s, it feels soft all around. So you feel your toes curl, curling and just sinking and the, the carpet-like insole wrapping around your foot and soaking it in. So that's good. But it's still not enough for the toe area. I wish they would have done something a little bit better there. Uh, the fit, of course, is another topic that we want to discuss. It fits true to size. It's, uh, it's, it's got a, a bit more give than the 34s because the 34s with this little uh, innovative little tech thing to show as a window to the zoom here and perhaps to provide some 
uh, safety because of Zion, his foot shooting out of his shoes. They have added this reinforcement. But this kind of like shaped into my, my uh, pinky toe area or the joint around the pinky toe area. I had to go up a half a size, but it still felt a little bit tight. Uh, but the good thing about the 34 is that I love how the toe box area is very flat and it just hugs your foot. There are instances in many Adidas models where the toe box is just lifted to so much. So no matter how hard you lace things up, you feel like your toes are wriggling and completely uh, out of control. Uh, it's not as bad as the Adidas models, but it's certainly not as secure and firm as the 34s on the toe box area. I wish it would be a little bit flatter like the 34s, but it's not a huge difference, but it's a little bit of a, a little bit of a, a downgrade in that area. Uh, they use an interesting material where it's soft, uh, curum if you could call it maybe. Uh, got a TPU plastic, rubbery, wiry, spider net kind of thing on top of uh, a mesh material. It's not crazy breathable, the shoe itself. Um, I like this little suede material that they that you may have seen in the Jordan 7 All-Star version. It's not it's a nice little touch. Uh, the lacing system is very similar to the uh, 34s, except it's more exposed, so it, it's a little bit easier for you to lace them up, uh, and you don't have to worry about them the the tiny little wire snapping. It's a, a lot firmer than the 34s in that respect. And the also. You can see the the herringbone pattern going one direction and exploding towards the outside, which is good. It's one direction and then exploding towards the outside. So that's that's a bit of a change or a modification from the old uh, Jordan 34s, where the out uh, the outsole is got the herringbone pattern going 45 degrees diagonally up and down. So it's very similar to the Kobe fours, but instead of the Kobe fours, if you have a, a herringbone traction that's altered it's best to stick to what they used to do in the curry twos and the superfly twos they had from the core the herringbone pattern explodes all out in multi directions they should have done that so in terms of that this is closer to what I see as a better herringbone pattern but but here's the thing it's it feels as soft if not softer and the groove is thinner or if if not just as thin as 34, so I wish they would have made a little bit of an improvement there. Uh, I mean, if you look at the 32s, it is deep. The grooves are deep. The pattern didn't really work, but the grooves are really deep. So uh, maybe they could have taken a page from that playbook. Unfortunately, that's not the case, but not too bad. Not too bad. Traction is not too bad. It's, uh, it's, it, it's decent. Could be better, but it's decent. But again, don't wear this in uh, AstroTurf, urethane, or asphalt, cement. I wear this in clean out indoor courts. Otherwise, you're not going to have much of a, uh, a lifespan for this rather expensive model. So yeah, I think that pretty much sums things up. Uh, I hope I'm not leaving anything. Uh, yeah, I, I also like this little thing they did where in the 34s, they had the three axes for the 30s and Little, a little bit of a four at the edge. This time they've put a little V as in five, as in 35. So nice little touch there, Nike. Uh, can't wait for the lows to come out. I'm really looking forward to the various uh, zany colorways they're gonna release. Um, so yeah, good job, Nike. But yeah, I'll just focus on the positive for now. Uh, four foot is similar, but a little different, a little bit mushier. Uh, but yeah, it's a choice you'll have to make between the 34s and 35s in terms of that. Fit is better in, in terms of width. Uh, those who have really narrow feet and thought they fit just fine in the 34s going true to size, for this one you might want to go down half a size. Uh, I went true to size with this. I went half a size up for the 34s. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a nice fit. Uh, toe box could have used a little bit of an improvement. Uh, I feel like you might need to have an additional lace loop here to provide extra fastening. Uh, yeah, heel cushioning. Crazy volume zoom air, great. You can feel it. It's not too high off the ground, and it's res responsive and it, sh it absorbs the shock well. And the <laughs> the clip slate improvement in terms of not getting in the way of hill cushion.